Just Sky Sports News. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer expected to stay at May United despite 5 0 defeat against Liverpool. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer expected to remain in charge of May United despite the heavy defeat against Liverpool and the fact that a small number of players have reservation about the manager. The feeling within the club is that while the results were a bit disappointing and painful for everyone, the immediate focus is on improving after picking up one point from the last four Premier League games. United's next two Premier League games are against Tottenham and Man City, both live on Sky Sports, and they also face Atlanta in Champions League next week. But despite their poor results and huge sorry, external speculation, there's no suggestion from inside the club. Social job is under threat at this point. Social job is still training on Tuesday with the team not in action again uh, until Saturday, having exited the Carabao Cup surprise defeat against West Ham last month. So, ex person was in attendance at Carrington, but it's understood that the former United boss was not there to speak to Social or the squad. The majority, if not all, the United squad, like Social as a man, um, believe he was done great things at the club, but there are a small number of reservations. All the players are desperate for Social to concede given his legendary status at the club, but some are doubting if he can deliver that success. Sky Sports has learned some players are unsure about the coaching methods with not enough emphasis on pressing and small-sided games. Meanwhile, in Italy, reports are reporting that um, Chelsea manager, former Chelsea manager Tony Conte has been in contact with United about taking over should they decide to make a change. Sky Sports News understands that there has not been contact between the parties. If United were looking to make a replacement, Solskjaer is likely that they would want a manager with a different profile. Conte is not a particular hurry to return to work and will still take his time and study any proposal which may put him in front of him. Um, it's likely that he'll have more options in summer considering his success at Juventus, Chelsea and Inter. Solskjaer called a 5 new defeat at Liverpool, the heaviest home defeat in the fixture his darkest days United manager Norwegian has adamant the club um, are close to achieving the success he says we've come too far as a group and we've closed um, we're too close to give up now he said on Sunday I've heard nothing else this is the lowest I've been but I've, as I've said I accept the responsibility I do myself I do in my I do believe in myself I do believe that I'm getting close to what I want to to get with this club I think that what we've done what I've seen, the development, of course, the results lately haven't been good enough, but I've got to keep going strong. I do believe in what we've been doing, the coaching staff and the players. Solskjaer now faces the huge task of picking his squad up and against uh, ahead of Saturday's trip to Tottenham. Uh, United are seventh in the Premier League with nine games to go. So, a whole entire shit show of a situation. United lose 5-0 on the weekend against their bitter rivals in Liverpool. It, it kind of follows a bad run of form. The performance was terrible. Again, you can lose games 5-0. Um, it happens in football. Also, it's not like, you know, it's not a desirable result. But the manner the which, which we lost it, the fact that Liverpool took their foot off the gas for the last 20 minutes of the game. <clears throat> Again, if we face the Man City with Pep Guardiola, who's a kind of ruthless machine when it comes to kind of adding more goals to the tally of his team, that could have been easy in the double digits. So, so something definitely to be worried about. And then, of course, the fact that the players down tools for the most part, probably came on, brief cameo, got himself sent off. All this sort of ill discipline shows in general there's a real lack of respect the players have for the coaching staff and maybe the coaching staff that have for the players in general. Just all in all, bad vibes all around. Then all the little stuff going on with the team, Greenwood and Round, now they have an issue. People have an issue with Maguire now with his captaincy. Like, there's loads of stuff happening. People have an issue with the fact that some people get picked despite having poor games and never get subbed. All these weird things that like us as fans myself included have been saying for the longest time and we've had top reds right shouting us down specifically i was talk about this forum that i used to be on called fred tissue called the united forum right full of absolute donuts right who for the most part would shout you down if you started to talk about how poor of a manager only got a social is and the fact that what you saw on the pitch on the match day was definitely a reflection of what they do in training and that's left you concerned because we had no style of play no patterns of play no method of attack no method of defending we just look like we were a hodgepodge of individual players put together and asked to hey go out there and perform and hope that it bit of individual brilliance as they're calling on social media win us the game and for the longest time it actually did work for two and a half seasons it did work but then eventually that type of approach of football isn't going to work and the teams that are better organized that have better structure from a from, from you know from uh, from the boardroom level all the way down to the pitch will definitely end up catching up and will definitely end up being successful despite sometimes the managers that they have in charge look at Chelsea man they had Roberto Di Matteo in charge of their team and they still won the Champions League what's Roberto Di Matteo now those type of teams and the way they're structured are basically built um, in a way where the managers don't matter as much as maybe as a club like United do which is why I kind of push back on people like Stephen Housen from Stratford Paddock and his own channel who kind of talks out both sides of his mouth he would say you know he'll talk about how he's so 
he was talking about how detail oriented he is when it comes to his own team, right? And the work that he does and the books that he reads and the tactical approach that he takes and how serious he is with training, blah, 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 blah. But then suddenly when it comes to United and it comes to our team, the manager isn't as important. There's no such thing as new manager bounce. All these sort of things that he kind of prides himself with his own team for some reason doesn't necessarily get um, spoken about the same way when it comes to Man United, which is bizarre. But let's say that is true. Let's say that he's, he's right. In some respects, in order to get to that point where managers are not important as they are at United, you're going to need to have a structure in place that's similar to some of the best clubs in the world, like the Bayern Munichs, like the, you know, like the, like the, like the, even the Man Cities, how they run now at the moment, right? They put in another manager, you know, they had, they had Pellegrini in charge and he won the league too, right? They had these ma managers that are not world class, they're not world beaters, but they're still able to kind of replicate some level of success. If that's the case, we're going to need a structure in place that's maybe going to upset a lot of the top reds because it's going to involve getting a lot of external people in, people that aren't necessarily part of the class of 92, that don't know what the United DNA is, that don't give a fuck about United DNA, they just want to do a job. They're going to be the ones that are going to need to hire. But again, that's a story for another day. Going back to the game in general, going back to our club, then obviously following that loss, the rumours swirl around, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is going to get sacked, those people are getting briefed, Fabrizio Romano makes a video preempting Ole is going to get sacked, he puts it I think in his playlist, forgets to unlist it, people grab it and think oh my god he's getting sacked, of course that doesn't end up happening, the Conte links are extensifying, then they kind of die down because people are talking about his profile and how he is, his temperament and again just insane kind of theories that are coming out of United and again the entitlement it's just bizarre to think that we are the only club that deserve a manager to stay at our club for 10 plus years just because we had one coach that did that it's just insane especially when you look at the cl the kind of landscape of football management or the landscape of football business in general, especially at the top end, the fact that there's so much on the line, there's so much at risk, the fact that these clubs can't necessarily risk having a manager in place for more than three years who isn't successful because, you know, that's going to affect their commercial side of the club in general. That's just how it is, right? There's too much money on the line to allow that. Obviously, we would love to be in that kind of place, but in general, that's never going to happen. So the quick turnaround in players and in coaches is just the nature of the game because these people are the most help maybe, are the most expandable and also hold the most value especially in players when it comes to players and managers you know it's going to go first as manager always because there's too many players to get rid of all of them to give the manager you know the cartel blanche to do what they want but anyway that doesn't happen then stories come out again leaked that oh ollie's actually going to stay and then you're like bloody hell they're actually going to let him stay off the back of all this noise that's happened the fact that the club never came out to publicly back the guy and say that we don't care what happened we're going to stick with him until december or until or until the summer right or yeah or until basically the end of the season nothing comes out they let all these leaks come out from the players players basically infighting everything that we basically were, were saying as fans well we are prophesizing the fact that why would harry Maguire get given a captain's armband when he had, wasn't even a captain of his previous club the fact that he only was there for six months the fact that his performances have been fluctuating up and down for so much and the fact that he's not even you know one of the best defenders in the league let's just be honest you know what i mean could get to cut this down by that club at united is either a mark of your leadership in the club or i'm or quite have a clear indication that you're one of the best players at the club in general right but it doesn't again story for another day all these leads are coming out about Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and then they're telling you that he's not going to stay he's going to stay at the club and then you're hearing stories about Alex Ferguson saying that he's going to stay or basically lobbying for him which is again super upsetting but not surprising the fact that we're under Glazer's, Glazer's ownership is in part due to Alex Ferguson even though he's a legend we have to he has to take responsibility for that the fact that a lot of our top reds don't like calling out the Glazers is in part because of Alex Ferguson and he's no value in the market and protecting the Glazers at all costs when he was in charge even now in his retirement he still hasn't said anything bad about the Glazers right even now in retirement he still hasn't said nothing about the Glazers especially when you consider how kind of crippling their ownership has been to our overall long-term successes and the fact that they've never wanted to really rel relinquish any sort of power and control going forward so in a weird place we're in a strange 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 place so now for whatever reason the club are expecting Oli to pick these same players up who essentially threw him under the bus um, to essentially go back into work at a club where people are basically talking about how he's not fit for the job because especially if you read the reports it seems like the boardroom was split some of them didn't believe he was fit for the job but also didn't believe that there was a candidate available at the moment that could walk in and change things or that was a better or that was the best fit for us as a club which again i disagree with but again that's their prerogative but knowing that there's people in the club that don't support you there's players in the club that don't think you're a good enough manager i think there was a story that came out that allegedly after the leicester defeat at 4-2 someone came up to him. i think it was maybe Aaron Bailly called him out and said why would you start harry Maguire if he's injured why don't you just play me do you know what i mean like 
yeah, you put us in a position again. He played poorly, but it wasn't necessarily his fault. A player's never going to say, I can't play if you give an opportunity to play, especially a captain. So he played and then he had an absolute horror show, right? The Leicester, the Leicester supporters got on his back. He made a couple of mistakes. And then from then on, he just couldn't really, you know, pull himself out of it. It happens. It is what it is. But they called him out. He didn't have nothing to say, I guess. Who knows? But all these things are going on and, and the club is expecting him to pick it all up. And it leads me to believe that all these people that purport to be Ole Gunnar Solskjaer fans that love the guy, want him to be successful, they don't really want him to be successful. They don't. Because if they do want him to be successful, they would say, hey, you're not going to be a success at this club any time of day, like in any lifetime. You're just not. Because we're not set up in a way to bring the best out of you. Because if you really think about it, if you really, really think about it, if Oli was to be a success at any club, especially a top fight club, you'd imagine it would have to be a similar sort of setup to like an Ajax, right? They have like a, you know, a burgeoning youth set up. Um, they get players in from cheap from abroad, young ones that they can kind of mould. Um, they get kind of, they have experienced players who kind of pepper into the squad as well, right? Tadiches, the the Daily Blinds, all these players and then mix in with some foreign players they bring in, like that lad from Brazil who's got a left foot, who's amazing, I think it's Anthony. Um, then the other players that they bring in, right, um, through the academy and shit, players that they buy, they bring in for the academy and then sell on to bring other profits to them to the club to uh, buy other players to so maybe expand a training club session to, tra to expand their training facilities. These kind of clubs are the ones that I imagine that Oli would succeed in because essentially he'd be hired as just like a sort of cheerleading man manager type person, right? Less about the coaching because the coaching has already been implemented these players from the youth setup all the way through who have expert coaches around him. He would just be inserted in as a kind of face, a kind of leadership figure for the team, right? For the club, a rousing figure to kind of get them all in. That's where a manager like Oli would succeed. But when you ask him to do the managerial role at a club like United, where there's no footballing people in charge, where the financial capabilities or possibilities of our club are really dependent on whether or not we where we finish in the league, where the owners don't really care about, you know, um, footballing success and only care about the commercial side of things, you know, win top four, you get top four for the most part, United manager, you're basically guaranteed a job for life. Well, all these things that are happening at United basically limit his ability to be successful. It just does, right? And we've seen it over the last three years or so, or three seasons or so. He hasn't been successful. No trophies won. Obviously, league positions have improved. The points have improved slightly. But all in all, the performances have been pretty mediocre with the exception of the interim spell that he had. And most of it has been in due, partly, with the structure around the club. And I find it funny. I find it hilarious. All these leaks coming out, I've not heard one mention of John Murto. One mention of Darren Fletcher being briefed or being brought in or into the discussion about who's going to succeed um, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Because make no mistake, whether it's Tottenham, Man City, Atalanta, whatever it is, right? He's going to go, right? He's too poor of a manager. Football ha tells no lies. You know, Luke Shaw has been unprofessional for the majority of his career. And, you know, now he's suffering basically the effects of it. He had one good season. And now we're seeing the average of Luke Shaw, right? Looks a bit tubby for a left back and just generally plays to a level that isn't of the standard that we need at the club like United. No no, no amount of excuses, no amount of narratives that Oleg Mourinho was bullying him, you know, are ever going to kind of do away with the fact that if, you pl if you're consistently poor for your most of your career, it will eventually going to catch up on you. Or if you're, consist if you're not to a level needed most of your career, it will catch up on you. And same thing some things happening with Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, who eventually will get sacked. And when he does, does the club have, actually have a plan in place as to what they want to do going forward? Not really. Are they biding themselves some time before they make the decision? Probably. Because if you get a Conte in, you're basically committing to another Mourinho sort of type of signing where he's going to come in and want his own players. He's going to come in and want to play his own brand of football. He's going to come in and demand things for the ball that they're not going to be able to promise. All right. And then eventually they're going to end up breaking it off and go to another direction, which is fine. I think football management, and again, it's just United fans that have this idea that for the, some part, we ha for the most part, we deserve a manager that's going to stay at our club for years and years and years. That just isn't the reality of the situation and we need to move on from that we we had Ole Gunnar Solskjaer sorry we had Alex Ferguson as our manager so Alex Ferguson legendary manager but again he was an anomaly he was a one-off same with Arsenal Menga at Arsenal one-off they're anomalies you can't expect the same thing from an Arteta or from Ole Gunnar Solskjaer it's not going to happen they're not of the standard of those kind of coaches and the football's just moved on the competition now in the league is just so strong to expect a manager to come in 
and have no success for five years in the route to kind of get back to winning stuff with the other guys in, in charge and whilst they're for the trophy cabinets, it just doesn't make no sense. The fans won't allow it. The sponsors won't allow it. The players won't allow it because players will end up moving if they're not successful. Like All these things are just not going to happen. It just doesn't make any sense. Not even worth even speaking about. But again, we have to say it because some fans are under this impression. So ideally, I'd love for us to be in a position where we hire Conte and we have a plan in place for the next manager coming in. Because ideally, well, the manager's available now at the moment. Who, you know, again, the only people that are available, free of a job, are Zidane and Antonio Conte. The other managers being considered, like the Pochettinos and Ten Hags, have jobs at the moment. Pochettino, I think that boat has sailed. We never wanted to get him in the first place because we were in love with Oli. Now, now he's at PSG. That ship has sailed. I've moved on. Let him do his job there. We continue. The Ten Hag thing I'm interested in because of the way they play football, um, how he appears to be as a coach, and as a manager, it maybe is a better fit. He is involved in tiny bits of the recruitment process from what I've read. So maybe he'll be a good fit for the United in the current structure. But again, he would still need structures around him to kind of make him successful. But I'm sure a manager coming in from Ajax is going to demand those things. Van Gaal demand those things. They didn't give it to him because Ed Wilder didn't want to relinquish control, right? But I, I am sure a manager from you know, those sort of leagues would want that. I'm even sure Conte would want that as well. Some consultation with the person in charge and whatever. He'd want some sort of um, ownership on that. But I'm also sure maybe in a negotiation process, if they did hire a Conte, United might say, hey, you're coming in under the under the, under the under the notion or under the idea that you can only use what you have until January and you can only buy when you sell. So he might come in and have the opportunity to be like, okay, cool, I'm going to change the narrative and I'm just going to use what's given to me half the season to show how good of a manager I am and go from there. That may be a solution too. I don't know. But in general, it is kind of a um, a clear indication that United are run by absolute jokers. The fact that they've kind of allowed somebody who they believed in, in Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, to get his position in his career is crazy. I think if you back him as a coach, and again, I don't relate the guy. I don't think he's a good man. I don't think he's a good coach at all. I think he might be one of the worst coaches in the league, personally, in my opinion. I think he'd do a. I think he'd do a terrible job trying to keep up the likes of Norwich and Newcastle. If those are really, if those are jobs that actually test your ability to be a coach and a manager because of their limited resources or because of the overinflated expectations of the fans, despite their limited resources in, in terms of like the Newcastles and shit. If those man, if those jobs are actual real representations of how hard it is to be a coach. I have a hard time believing Oli, McKenna, Carrick, Mike Feely and keep Norwich or Newcastle up. I, I don't believe it. I don't even believe they even keep a Brentford up. Real talk. I just don't believe it. Because those managers are, you know, especially a Brentford manager, he looks like he's got a system, a style of play he's put, in, he's put in place. You know, he's got players in, in this team who are better than the sum of their parts. He's not just after the names. He's not after individual brilliance. Like, there's a whole different game, ball game going over there. So I'm not even a fan of the guy. But even I have to say, if you are a fan of him at the club and you do think he's the right guy for the job, you have to either come out boldly after the 5 0 loss and say, We're not going to sack this guy under any circumstances until the end of the season because of what so much great work that he's done. We're going to give you this guy the right to kind of try and turn it around, right? Because he saved us after the Mourinho thing. That's it. Or you sack him on the spot and you move on. No in betweens. No two games, three games. It doesn't make any sense because what essentially they're saying to Oligan Solskjaer, they're saying to him, you have three games to save your career, but if you lose one really badly, it doesn't matter if the scoreline is not that bad, but the performance is terrible, you're going to get fired. How does that make any sense? How can you get fired for one mistake, but then you can keep your job if you do well over three games? It doesn't make any sense. You have to have a timeline that's just set. Like, hey, here's your review. You have six months to save your job and you just have six months to save your job. There is no, oh, it's so bad after two months you have to leave. No, give me the six months, give me the three, give me the two, give me the one and let's move on. But they don't do that. They don't do that. Now they're in a position, again, they're making this guy come in. How embarrassing it's got to be. He has to come pick up these players who don't want to play for him, who think he's not good enough for the job. Like him as a person, just don't think he's good enough for the job. Players who are openly saying they're not going to sign a new contract unless he gets fired. <laughs> yeah. Players that are moving management. Again, a Pogba's come out and said something different. But for the most part, players are coming out essentially saying that, you know, this team ain't going to go anywhere with this coaching stuff in place. It's just a mad situation to be in, man. Again, well, what can you do in it? What can you do? What can you say? What can you say? What can you say, man? Again, I, I would love there to be a kind of rainbow at the end of this, but a pot go at the end of the rainbow. I don't think there is. I just don't think you can cheat football. I think the clubs that are the worst run, the clubs where the fans seem to be the most divided. Again, United is so weird like that. Some of our fan base are hell-bent on thinking managers make 
are all gonna make all the difference. Some of our fan base think the transfers are all the difference. Some of our fan base thinks Pogba's the issue, Martial, all these weird things that don't really make any sense. When really in general it's the whole structure of the club. It's the whole it's the overall of the club. The fact that our squad is imbalanced, the fact that we have players on contracts just because we don't want to let them go because we want to retain their value, which is insane. They're probably not going to be a good influence for the team. Phil Jones has just come back from injury, right? He's terrible, right? But he didn't want to give up his number four show because he was generally thought he was going to get a chance to play in the league. So do you reckon someone like him who hasn't got a sniff, even though he's been doing loads of media, he's been going on Manchester United podcasts and shit, like doing loads of stupid stuff, going on the Times, doing interviews, stuff that you'd imagine would be a way for him to get back into the first team. He hasn't had a sniff. He's been on the sub bench a couple of times, but he hasn't played at all. Do you think he's happy with his performances or with his, with his ability to play for this team? Probably not. Why well, Matt has come out and said some stuff as well. Like all these things are not going to be helpful because people are, again, they're going to be positive. They're going to be, I won't say popular, but they're going to be mainstays of the dressing room. People are going to listen to what they say, like it or not. So the fact that they are still around just because people with the club want to keep them is just wild to me. But again, we move on, innit? We move on. What can we do here? Now, I can't really do much. So there's no point in really talking about this stuff. We just move on, man.